بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مذن له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور مهدثاتها وكل مهدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته brothers so we continue from where we left off um, last week inshallah so if you remember correctly the sheikh was explaining to us the meaning of um, La ilaha illallah and so the sheikh was uh, going through the meaning the meaning of the shahadatain so we were on the first pillar of Islam the sheikh was explaining it and we were, and he was explaining the testification the first testification from the two and inshallah uh, we'll complete today the, the first testification which is uh, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah yeah, and then the second one is Wa ashadu anna Muhammadun Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam So we'll complete the first testification which is connected to La ilaha illallah And then inshallah next week we will complete the second part of that testification inshallah Because it's quite a lengthy lessons actually now And we're going, go, we're going through a lot of details so we don't want to go through it too quickly either Inshallah So then uh, anyway, the Shaykh um, he was explaining the meaning of La ilaha illallah and its conditions and its pillars and, and things like this. So we'll carry on from where we left off and uh, hopefully uh, in this lesson we'll be reminded of what we uh, went through last week as well, inshallah. So then the Shaykh, he says, فَدَلَّ عَلَىٰ أَنَّ مَعْنَاهَا لَا مَعْبُودَ بِحَقٍ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَلَوْ كَانَ مَعْنَاهَا لَا خَالِكَ وَلَا رَازِقَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ فَإِنَّ هَذَا يَقِرُّونَ بِهِ وَلَا وَلَا يُمَارُونَ فِيهِ فَلَوْ كَانَ هَذَا مَعْنَاهَا مَا امْتَنَعُوا مِنْ قُولِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ لِأَنَّهُمْ يَقُولُونَ إِذَا سُئِلُوا مَنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ يَقُولُونَ الله إذا سألوا سُئِلُوا مَنْ الَّذِي يَخْلُقْ مَنْ الَّذِي يَرْزُقْ مَنْ الَّذِي يُحْيِي وَيُمِيتْ وَيُدَبِّرُ الْأَرْضِ يَقُولُونَ الله هم يعترفون بهذا فلو كان هذا معنى لا إله إلا الله لأقروا بهذا لكن معناها لا معبودة بحق إلا الله So then the Sheikh he mentions he says here so you know the meaning of, of لا إله إلا الله the correct meaning of it and it, it points us towards that it means that there's none worthy of worship in truth except Allah and as explained, uh, the Sheikh explained last week, when you say La ilaha, it negates every deity that exists. Every, any kind of deity, all of them from whether it's a tree, whether it's a, a wall, whether it's a brick, wh wherever people worship in this world, it negates all of them. And then we say, Illallah. And then we, so we negate all deities except Allah and it means that there's none worthy of worship in truth except Allah and that's the correct meaning so this is what the Sheikh mentions here and he mentioned it as well last week and and he makes a distinction between why we say that and why that's the meaning and the evidences as well which you mentioned last week we'll go through again uh, and here the Sheikh says for example and even if it was said or his meaning was for example there is no creator there is no provider except Allah for he says, indeed, this is what the <clears throat> the Mushrikeen uh, will uh, will testify to as well, and they won't argue with they won't argue with you in that. And then the Sheikh he says, for example, he says he says here, "Follow kana hada ma'naha mamtana u min qawli la ilaha illallah." And the Sheikh says, so if a man other than what we just said, so if a man other than uh, there is none worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as that is a correct meaning. If it meant something else, then it wouldn't have prevented the polytheists in saying it 
But what happened if you look back at history and the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? What happened? They, they, they didn't want to say it. They didn't want to say la ilaha illallah. Why? Because they knew that if they said that, they'd have to they negate their um, their deities. You know, it negate all their deities because that's what it means, and that they would have to um, uh, turn all of their worship to Allah subhanahu wa taala alone, which, which we know means uh, a tawhid. So then the Shaykh says, and he, he makes a distinction there to help us understand. And then the Shaykh says, because they say, if if they, if they were asked who uh, created the heavens and the earth, they would turn around and they would say, Allah. And if they were asked, uh, um, who is the creator and who creates, they would say, and who provides, and who's a provider, and who gives life. And uh, causes death and disposes of the affairs of the the universe. And let's just say the earth for for our example here. They would turn around the polytheists and they'd say Allah, because they openly confess that in those affairs. But they fall into Allah's lordship, Rububiyah, as previously explained in previous lessons. And if anybody attended attended Brother Wasim's lesson. Last week on Saturday as well, he was going through this exact point as well through part of his lesson, which you mentioned. So it's a similar theme going on here with regards to the foundations of the religion. So then the Sheikh, he says, so he says, if this was the meaning of La ilaha illallah, then they would have testified by saying it openly. But they didn't. Why? Because La ilaha illallah, as we've established, in it is negation and in it is affirmation and the negation is the first part la ilaha meaning that there's no deity at all worthy of worship and then the second part accept allah in truth accept allah in truth then that is the affirmation and these are the two conditions <coughs> um of of uh, la ilaha illallah yeah so then the shaykh continues and he says لو قلت لا معبود إلا الله هذا غلط كبير لأن المعبودات كلها تكون هي هي الله تعالى الله تعالى الله عن هذا لكن إذا قيدتها وقلت بحق انتفت المعبودات كلها إلا الله سبحانه وتعالى لا بد أن تقول لا معبود حق حق أو لا معبود بحق إلا الله ثم بين ذلك على لفظ الكلمة <تصفيق> So then the Sheikh makes a very important point and, and sometimes I think sometimes we can forget. You know where people are doing their adhkar or they'll say only part of it. They'll say, for example, La ilaha, they'll say La ilaha and they say La ilaha and they don't say La ilaha illallah. Essentially what they're saying is there's no God at all. There is no deity which puts you in the same uh, group as the atheists. So you've got to be very careful what you're saying. And we need to understand what we're saying. And so the Sheikh, he mentions this here uh, uh, briefly. And it's worth noting that, you know, we need to make sure that whenever we say La ilaha, uh, whenever we say this phrase, we say the whole phrase, we say all of it, La ilaha illallah, all together. They have, they're together. They have to be together like that. And so then the Sheikh goes on and he explains, he goes on to explain um he breaks down La ilaha illallah further and he explains it. So he says, La ilaha. That is what they, in Arabic they call a nafi, negation. So as explained, we're negating, we're negating all deities that exist. And then we say, illallah. And this is what in Arabic they say, ithbat or athabat. In, uh, and it means to affirm. So on one hand, we're negating everything that is worshipped. And then we're affirming Worship for Allah alone. This is what we're doing. So what we're saying is, none has a right to be worshipped in truth except Allah. That's exactly what that means. That's what the Sheikh has mentioned here as well. So then if we continue, um, we'll just uh, read this top part here because I think this is going to lead on to uh, what we, we uh, when we finish this paragraph. So, the Sheikh says here, وَتَفْسِيرُهَا الَّذِي يُوَضِّحَا قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ لِأَبِيهِ وَقَوْمِهِ إِنَّنِي بَرَاءٌ مِمَّا تَعْبُدُونَ إِلَّا الَّذِي فَتَرَنِي فَإِنَّهُ سَيَهْدِينَ 
وجعل وجعلها كلمة باقية في عقبه لعلهم يرجعون from سورة الزخرف verse 26 to 28 uh, I think we read this last week but no I'm mean going through that again uh, let's go through the, trans- uh, the meaning of the translation or the meaning of the ayah the translation and remember when Ibrahim said to his father and his people verily I am innocent of what you worship except him i.e. I worship none but Allah alone who did who created me and verily he will guide me and he made it la ilaha illallah none has a right to be worshipped in truth except Allah a word lasting among his offspring true monotheism that they may turn back i.e. to repent to Allah or receive admonition so this is the proof of the meaning of la ilaha illallah and the shaykh will go through inshallah but we mentioned it now because we're just going past it so we may as well read it inshallah so then uh, the shaykh says فلا إله إلا الله تشتمل على نفي وإثبات ولا بد في التوحيد من النفي والإثبات لا يكفي الإثبات وحدة ولا يكفي النفي وحدة بل لا بد من النفي والإثبات كما قال تعالى فمن يكفر بالطاغوت ويؤمن بالله واعبد الله ولا تشرك به شيئا فلو قلت الله إله هذا لا يكفي اللات إله والعزة إله ومنات إله كل الأصنام تسمى آلهة فلا بد أن تقول لا إله إلا الله فلا بد من الجمع بين النفي والإثبات حتى يتحقق التوحيد وينتفي الشرك أو حتى يتحقق التوحيد وينتفي الشرك. so then um, the sheikh mentions here so he says he says he says uh, he says لا إله إلا الله you know in, what it encompasses is uh, what it consists of is as we mentioned negation and affirmation and he says it's incumbent uh, for your tawheed to be correct and true monotheism true tawheed is that we have this nafi this negation and this affirmation as the sheikh explained it's not sufficient that we just have uh, affirmation or we just have a negation rather both of them have to be present for it to be true Tawheed as Allah intended. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intended. So this is what the Shaykh is saying. And then he gives two evidences. One from Surah Al-Baqarah verse 256. And another from Surah Al-Nisa verse 36. So with uh, this ayah here. So if we go to Surah Al-Baqarah. Uh, and have a look at that. Ayah verse 256. So let's go there. 256 We'll read the whole ayah There is no compulsion in religion Verily the right path has become distinct from the wrong path Whoever disbelieves in Ta'ud And believes in Allah Then he has grasped the most trustworthy handhold That will never break And Allah is the all-hearer The all-knower That's the whole ayah And if you go to Surah An-Nisa Verse 36 as well If you go to verse 36, bear with me. We'll read the whole ayah. Worship Allah and join none with him in worship and do good to parents, kinsfolk, orphans, al-masakin, the poor, the neighbor who is near of kin, the neighbor who is a stranger, the companion by your side, the wayfarer you meet, and those slaves whom your right hand possesses. Verily, Allah does not like such, are proud and boastful. And if we and we just go back to this eye here and that part where it says Wa'budullaha wa la tushriku bi shay'a I don't think that was mentioned in there but anyway the meaning of that is that worship Allah worship Allah and don't associate any partners with him do not associate anything in worship with him and that's the evidences as well that point towards the meaning of la ilaha illallah that the shaykh was explaining to us so we continue then he says and then he says here the shaykh he says so if he said Allah is a deity. He says this is not sufficient. Why? Because the Sheikh says, for example, the pagans, the Arab pagans, as an example, one example, they'll say Allah uh, was the name, name of one of their idols. Allah is um, is is a deity. Al Uzza is a deity, and Manat is a deity. All of these are ne- are called deities. So therefore, it's not enough to just say that Allah is a deity. That the Sheikh is making the point, uh, as made previously as well, 
that there has to be uh, um, negation and affirmation. Then the Shaykh continues and he says, so he says, so therefore it's it's absolutely necessary and common that you say, La ilaha illallah. So he says here that you have to say it together. You say that there is none worthy of worship in truth except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says, and it's uh, no doubt that you've got to, you've got to bring those two statements together. That the negation and the affirmation have to be together. As in the statement, La ilaha illallah. Up until the point that when you say it like this, with, uh, when you say the complete statement, then you've actualized the true Tawheed that Allah has intended. And you have basically uh, negated shirk, all of it. So then the Shaykh he continues and he says, خَيْرَ مَا يُفَصِّرُ الْقُرْآنَ الْقُرْآنَ فَلَا فلا إله إلا الله فسرها الله في القرآن وذلك في قول الخليل عليه الصلاة والسلام فيما ذكر الله عنه إنني براء هذا النفي لا إله إلا, لا إله إلا الذي فترني يأني إلا الله هذا الإثبات So then the Shaykh says the best of that which explains the Quran and gives its exegesis is the Quran itself and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained in the Quran the meaning um, this meaning uh, uh, with regards to uh, the meaning of Tawheed and the meaning of La ilaha illallah in, in, uh, when um, when uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, alayhi salatu wasalam, uh, said uh, from the Quran, from Allah's speech where Allah mentioned him, where he said indeed I am free as in, he's free of the idols that they worship, that his people worship. And and then he said, uh, and then in the other part of the ayah, إِلَّا الَّذِي فَتَرَنِي That showing that there's affirmation that he directs his worship to the one who brought him into existence. And that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is affirmation. So there's negation and affirmation there as another evidence for us. So then the shaykh continues and he says, he says, وَقَوْلُوا تَعَالَى قُلْ يَا أَهْلُ الْكِتَابِ تَعَالَوْ So what we'll do is, before I read 36.36 36 here, uh, why don't we just read the whole ayah over here? So let's read that just to set us for the next part of this lesson. So then the Shaykh uh, says, وَقَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى قُلْ يَا أَهْلُ الْكِتَابِ تَعَالَوْ إِلَى كَلِمَةٍ سَوَاءٍ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَكُمْ أَنْ لَا نَعْبُدَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَلَا نُشْرِكَ بِهِ شَيْئًا وَلَا يَتَّخِذَ بَعْضُنَا بَعْضًا أَرْبَابًا مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ فَإِنْ تَوَلَّوْا فَقُولُوا شَهَدُوا بِأَنَّا مُسْلِمُونَ And that's from Surah Al-Imran, verse 64. And I think we mentioned this last week, I believe. Anyway, let's go through it. Let's know how I'm reading it again. 60, no, sorry, 64. Verse 64. Let's read that. Verse 64 from Surah Al-Imran. Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O people of the scripture, Jews and Christians, come to a word that is just between us and you, that we worship none but Allah, and that we associate no partners with him, and that none of us, and that none of us shall take others as lords besides Allah. Then if they turn away, say, bear witness that we are Muslims. So then the Shaykh, he continues and he says, وَقَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى قُلْ يَا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ تَعَالَوْا إِلَىٰ كَلِمَةٍ سَوَاءٍ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَكُمْ أَنْ لَا نَعْبُدَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَلَا نُشْرِكَ بِهِ شَيْئًا هذه الآية من سورة آل إمران نزلت في وفد نجران النصارى الذين قدموا على أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وناظروه وسألوه وحصل بينهم وبينهم كلام طويل وهم نصارى وهم نصارى من نصارى العرب وفي النهاية طلب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم منهم المباهلة فقول تعالوا ندعو أبناءنا وأبناءكم ونساءنا ونساءكم وأنفسنا وأنفسكم ثم نبتهل فنجعل لأنة الله على الكاذبين So then the Shaykh he mentions the starting of the ayah uh, as, as we've read the translation of the meaning of 
and the Sheikh he says he says this ayah this verse is from Surah Ali Imran uh, as we've established and he says it was revealed uh, in the uh, uh, in the waft of Najran the Nasara that were there yeah the the, the Nasara that came that came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the Christians that came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a group of Christians that came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam of the Christians of the Arab Arabs and they um, uh, discussed and debated uh, and they asked. Uh, and there was a conversation between the Prophet Sallallahu and them. And so, and b- so, so between the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the, uh, and, the uh, and, and, and what they had said, it was a long, it was a long speech. There was a, it was a lengthy, uh, discussion. And the Christians, they were the Christians of the Arabs. Uh, and in the end, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam requested from them what they say, Al-Mubahala. And the Sheikh will explain what that means in a second. So it says, um, Al-Mubahala. And so if we go to the ayah from Surah Ali Imran, verse 61, that's previous, let's read that. It says, Then whoever disputes with you concerning him, Isa Jesus, after all this knowledge that has come to you, i.e. Isa Jesus, being a slave of Allah, and having no share in divinity, say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, come, let us call our sons and your sons, our women and your women, ourselves and yourselves. Then we pray and invoke sincerely the curse of Allah upon those who lie. And essentially, that's what mubahala is. And that's the uh, if you the ayahs that we read, the ayah that we read here. That's uh, the translation of what we just read here just now. So um, al mubahala is basically uh, uh, um, invoking Allah to place a curse. Upon the one who lies, so it happens usually when there's no can't reach an agreement, and the you know with the people or whatever's happening, and then so one one group, uh, and the other group they they do this they they call it mubahala and they invoke Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to curse the ones who are lying, and so this is what happened, and the Sheikh continues and he says here, so this is interesting to know now we should pay attention inshallah. So then the Sheikh says, فَلَمَّا طَلَبَ مِنْهُمُ الْمُبَاهَلَةَ خَافُوا وَلَمْ يُبَاهِلُوا لَمْ يُبَاهِلُوا عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ وَدَفَعُوا لَهُ الْجِزِيَةِ لِأَنَّهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ أَنَّهُمْ عَلَى بَاطِلِ وَنَوْرُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ So then, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam requested this mubahala, they got scared. They, 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 uh, they were fearful. And they didn't uh, take part in the mubahala with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And instead, what they did was, they paid the jizya because they didn't accept Islam then they're living under the, uh, uh, the state of the Muslim uh, the Muslim state, the Islamic state so therefore they, they paid the jizya instead that they had to pay because they knew that they were upon falsehood and they knew that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was the Rasul, was the messenger of Allah, they knew but they didn't just they didn't want to leave their belief so they just set up because they didn't go into the, in, enter into the bubala which is clearly showing you that you know they knew that they were upon falsehood and they knew that the prophet sallallahu he was actually was the prophet sent by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so then the shaykh continues and he says nabtahil so he's, that, that that's the verb for this uh, for the word mubahala that we mentioned so the shaykh he says nabtahil i e he says a nad'u bil la'nati ala al kadhib minna wa kanu ya'lamun annahum hum al kadhibun wa law bahaluhu la nazalat alayhim an nar wa ahraqatuhum fi makanihim fa qalu la lakin nadfa al jizya wa la nubahilukum fa fa qabila an nabiy sallallahu alayhi wasallam minhum al jizya laqad tabayyana lahum anna allaha amarahu bima fi hadhihi al ayah so then the Shaykh says, uh, he just explains a little bit further as in the word Mubahala and Nabtahil, what does it mean? Al-Mubahala, and he says, when you, uh, when you invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to place a curse on the one who is lying from us. So you have a group of people, they have a dispute, and one of them is stubborn, no one's giving up. And so then you have this uh, 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 situation of Al-Mubahala where you seek uh, you invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to curse the one who is lying. And so in this situation, uh, this particular situation that the Shaykh was explaining to us, 
of the Wafd uh, Najran, the other Christians, the Arab Christians there, they basically did not engage with this Mubahala uh, because they know they were on falsehood. And instead they settled for paying the jizya and the Prophet ﷺ accepted that from them. Because if they if they did take part in the Mubahala, then the Sheikh mentions here that the punishment would have descended from the skies upon them. Uh, fire would have descended upon them. Um, uh, and they would have been punished. And they knew that that they were in the wrong. So then the Shaykh continues and he says, وَهَذِي الْآيَةِ فِيهَا مَعْنَ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ قَوْلُهُ أَلَّا نَعْبُدَ هَذَا النَّفِي وَقَوْلُهُ إِلَّا اللَّهِ هَذَا الْإِثْبَاتِ وَهَذَا هُوَ الْعَدَلْ أَلَّذِي قَامَتْ لَهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ فَالسَّمَاوَاتِ فَالسَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ قَامَتْ عَلَى التَّوْحِيدِ وَالْعَدْلِ لَا نُشْرِكُ لَا نُشْرِكُ فِي عِبَادَتِهِ شَيْئًا لَا الْمَصِيحَ لَا الْمَصِيحَ رب تعبدونه من دون الله ولا غير المسيح ولا محمد عليه الصلاة والسلام ولا أحد من الأنبياء ولا من الصالحين ولا من الأولياء ألا نعبد إلا الله ولا نشرك به شيئا. So then the Sheikh he explains and he says, he says this ayah in it is the meaning of لا إله إلا الله and Allah speech where Allah said in that particular part of the ayah Allah Allah نعبده Allah and that and that we don't worship. The Shaykh says this is the negation that we were talking about. And then Allah's speech where he says, Illallah, except Allah. And this the Shaykh says is the affirmation that we've been talking about. And we see it again here in Allah's speech. And he says, This is just, this is justice. Um that this is the justice. Um uh, that we see from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, that how you know the, the earth and the the uh, the heavens and the earth stand upon this justice that Allah's placed and and everything is upon has stood up upon tawheed and, and that is justice and that that you and that we don't uh, commit uh, shirk and polytheism uh, in our worship and that we direct all of our worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So we don't worship the uh, Isa alayhi salam and you know it was just like the Christians do and uh, uh, you know uh, and don't take him as a Lord besides Allah. Uh, likewise we don't take the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa as a Lord besides Allah uh, and likewise we, we don't take anything whether it's uh, you know a uh, prophets and messengers, uh, the righteous people, the awliya of Allah, for example. No, we don't take anything uh, in worship besides Allah. And we don't associate any partners with Allah in worship. So then uh, the uh, Shaykh mentions this ayah here uh, towards the end of this par- at the end of this paragraph. He says, Allah na'buda illallah wa la nushrika bihi shay'a. And that we do not worship, uh, and that we do not worship Anything except Allah subhanahu, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and that we do not associate any partners with him and we do not associate anything with him. That's an absolute statement that we do not associate anything with him. W- whatever it is, anything. So then the Shaykh continues and says, وَلَا يَتَّخِذَ بَعْضُنَا بَعْضًا أَرْبَابًا مِّن دُونِ اللَّهِ كَمَا اتَّخَذُمْ الْأَحْبَارَ وَرُهْبَانَ أَرْبَابًا مِّن دُونِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى اتَّخَذُوا أَحْبَارَهُمْ وَرُهْبَانَهُمْ أَرْبَابًا مِّن دُونِ اللَّهِ وَالْمَسِيحَ بْنَ مَرْيَمَ وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا إِلَاهًا وَاحِدًا And that's from Surah Tawbah, verse 31. We'll, we'll come back to the meaning in a second. So then the Shaykh says, وَاتِّخَاذَ الْأَحْبَارِ وَرُهْبَانِ مِّن دُونِ اللَّهِ بَيَّنَهُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم في أنه في أنه طاعتهم في تحليل ما حرم الله وتحليم ما أحل الله هذا معنى اتخاذهم أرباب من دون الله إذا كانوا يحللون ما حرم الله ويحرمون ما أحل ما أحل فإذا أطاعون أطاعوهم في ذلك فقد اتخذوهم أربابا لأن الذي يشرع للناس ويحلل ويحرم هو الله سبحانه وتعالى سدن الشيخ في إسحاق 
that he mentions the ayah, "Wala yatakhida ba'duna ba'dun arbab min dunillah," and that we and that we don't take uh, that that we don't take from from who is from amongst us um, uh, lords besides Allah. That we don't make ourselves lords besides Allah. And the Sheikh he says, like how um, the Christians and the Jews, the people of the book, the Christians, Jews took their monks and their rabbis as lords besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then uh, the Sheikh mentions the ayah, he says, اتخذوا أحبارهم ورهبانهم أرباب من دون الله والمسيح بن مريم وما أمروا إلا ليعبدوا إلها واحدة. So if we go to Surah At-Tawbah now, and let's have a look at the meaning of that, uh, of that particular verse. Verse 31. Uh, let's read uh, the whole ayah. They, Jews and Christians, took their rabbis and their monks to be their lords besides Allah by obeying them in things which they made made lawful or unlawful according to their own desires without being ordered by Allah. And they also took as their Lord, Messiah, son of Maryam, Mary, while they Jews and Christians were commanded in the Torah and the Injil gospel to worship none but one God, Allah, la ilaha illahu, none has a right to be worshipped in truth, but he, praise and glory be to him, far above is he from having the partners they associate with him. So that's the whole ayah that explains uh, what the Sheikh has been saying as well. Um, and is a proof for uh, what's being said here so then the sheikh says because he says that they took that the people of the book the jews and the christians as one example they took their uh their monks and they, you know their priests the monks and the and the rabbis uh lords uh besides allah uh, and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam clarified that uh, that they basically obeyed them and in that which um um allah didn't command them with so for example uh, these monks, these priests, and these rabbis, they changed. So what Allah had made haram, they made halal. And what Allah made halal, they made haram. So in effect, by doing that, they've uh, become, they made themselves as, as lords besides Allah. Right? And the shaykh, he says here, he says, and this is the meaning of, uh, where in Arabic, where they say, ittikhadum arbaban, that they, were, that they took their, um, uh, the monks, uh, priests, and rabbis as lords. This is the meaning, be, uh, lords besides Allah. So, for example, you know, if Allah, uh, for example, Allah said, has said to us clearly that uh, said to them clearly, for example, this is haram, they made it halal. When Allah said this is haram, they made it uh, halal. If they, if Allah said this is haram, they made it halal like that, and and so forth, and and they made what's haram halal and what's halal haram. Uh, and so they took them as lords besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? And the Sheikh explained because he says uh, they were make, creating the law and, and they were making that law, you know, their own law. But the one who actually uh, is the lawmaker is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody else has that right. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's right to make that law and, and to command us with it. So this is the meaning of the ayah. So then the Shaykh continues and says, فَإِن تَوَلَّوْا وَلَمْ يَقْبَلُوا دَعْوَةَ التَّوْحِيدِ فَقُولُوا شَهَدُوا بِأَنَّا مُسْلِمُونَ أَشْهَدُوهُمْ أَلَا أَنَّكُمْ مُوَحِدُونَ وَأَنَّهُمْ كُفَارِ بَيَّنُوا لَهُمْ بُطْلَانَ مَا هُمْ عَلَيْهِ فَفِي هَذِي الْآيَةِ الْبَرَاءَ مِنْ دِينِ الْمُشْرِكِينَ والنصار وال so then the Sheikh says, uh, mentions part of the ayah, says, So if they turn away and reject, for example, and turn away from the uh, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the proofs, uh, and they don't accept the 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 call of Tawheed, then say to them, then say that bear, take witness and bear witness that we are Muslims and make them bear witness that and show them that you know that you testify that you are Muslims, you are upon Tawheed, Muwahidun, and that they are Kufar, they're the disbelievers, and clarify to them the falsehood that they're upon. Uh, and in uh, this ayah, uh, uh, this ayatul bara, they call it al ayatul bara, the ayah of freeing ourselves, as in differentiating ourselves, uh, because we're upon tawheed, the Muslims are upon 
the Tawheed of Allah and the Kufar, of course, they're not upon Tawheed and they're upon Shirk. Uh, and, and, and this is a, 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 an ayah that frees, uh, is free, uh, frees itself from these people, the, the Mushrikun, the polytheists, uh, and whoever falls into polytheism or any other deen other than Islam. And that you say to them that testify, you see us that we are Muslims. So, so in this, the Sheikh says, so in this, there is uh, the obligation of openly uh, 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 refuting the falsehood of the uh, the mushrikeen, and 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 it shows us that it's it's not correct, it's incorrect, uh, and and not permissible to stay quiet upon falsehood when you see it, and that you should make it open, clarify the falsehood, the i.e. the shirk that they're upon, and that you refute, refute uh, with, with good manners, of course, you refute the people when they're on falsehood, on the falsehood. Uh, in this situation, the people who are committing shit here. And so the Shaykh says, well, khulasa, and in summary, an la, il an la ilaha illallah laha ruknan human nafi wal ifbad fa idha qila lak ma hiya arkan ma hiya arkanu la ilaha illallah fa taqulu النفي والإثبات وشروطها سبعة سبعة لا تنفع إلا بهذه الشروط نذمها بعضهم بقوله علم يكون علم يقين وإخلاص وصدقك مع محبة وانكياد والقبول لها. so we'll just stop there for a second. so then the sheikh says uh, here he says, so in summary, he says that the meaning that, that La ilaha illallah, it has two pillars. So let's pay attention now. That the the testification of La ilaha illallah, this this phrase that we're saying, it has two pillars. And as we know and discussed plenty, that the Sheikh has mentioned, he says, he says, a negation and affirmation. So if it was said to you, what what are the pillars of La ilaha illallah? You would say negation and affirmation. And its conditions are seven. So let's pay attention. Its conditions are seven. And La ilaha illallah doesn't benefit whoever says it, except that these seven conditions are within that person. That person is applying them. So inshallah, we'll finish. Inshallah, in the next five six minutes, which will, uh, which I think this is the last part of this half of the lesson. So we'll go through this, and it's particularly important to pay attention and uh, make some notes here, uh, because uh, this is the only way that our uh, uh, our saying of La Ilaha Illallah is is actually being actualized and put into uh, applic uh, being applied properly. So the seven uh, uh, seven conditions were in. Um, uh, uh, were in uh, a fa famous book. I can't remember the name now, but um, it's uh, to do with the usul of our deen. And uh, one of the uh, lines of poetry is what we just read here, uh, and it covers. These are the seven: is al ilm, so al al ilm, al yakin, al ikhlas, al sidq, al mahabba, wal inqiyad, wal qabul. So the Shaykh will explain this. So let's go through this, inshallah, and then we'll finish in the next two, three minutes, bi ta'ala. So the Shaykh says, فَالْعِلْمُ ذِدُّهُ الْجَهَلُ فَالَّذِي يَقُولُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ بِلِسَانِي وَيَجْهَلْ مَعْنَاهَا هَذَا لَا تَنْفَعُهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ So the first condition, al-ilm, knowledge, and the opposite, the, the uh, antonym of that is um, ignorance. So uh, the Shaykh says, so if, it, if it, so if it said, لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا الله, so if he, for example, somebody says La ilaha illallah with their tongue and they are ignorant of its meaning, then this person does not benefit and doesn't, it doesn't benefit, La ilaha illallah doesn't benefit him. Next, al yaqeen certainty. فَلَا يَكُونُ مَاهُ شَكْ لِأَنَّ بَعْدَ النَّاسِ قَدْ يَأْلَمْ مَعْنَاهَ وَلَكِنْ إِنْدَهُ شَكْ فِي ذَلِكَ فَلَيْسَ إِلْمُهُ بِصَحِيحٍ لَا لَا بُدَّ أَنْ يَكُونَ عِنْدَهُ يقين بلا إله إلا الله وأنها حق. so then the so then the sheikh says certainty. so the second condition certainty and 
and that is because that there isn't um, a doubt with the person that you have to be certain you can't have any doubt you have to be certain upon la ilaha illallah he says because some of the people you know indeed you know they know it they have knowledge they know the meaning of la ilaha illallah but they have a doubt in it of a various number of doubts that they might have about it and he says that this that his knowledge then is not correct and so in that so therefore it's important that we have absolute certainty in what la ilaha illallah it means and that is the truth thirdly the third condition al ikhlas diduhu shirk so al ikhlas is as we know we mentioned before previously this book and other books as well that we studied alhamdulillah that ikhlas is uh, you know uh, that you are uh, sincere that is only allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's sincere and there's you're not sharing that with anything and the opposite of ikhlas is shirk which is when you're sharing association sharing that whatever it might be so the shirk says some of the people they say la ilaha illallah but they uh, they uh, they don't leave off shirk for example he says mithlu ma huwa al waqi al an in the ubad al qubur haula la tanfa'u la ilaha illallah lana min shurutiha tark al shirk so the shirk gives an example he goes for example the people they say la ilaha illallah but then you see them um, uh, 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 performing acts of worship uh, 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 on the graves and upon the graves and around the graves so the shirk says that this person they say la ilaha illallah but they haven't left of shirk and so therefore they're not a mukhlis they haven't purified their worship for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone so this is another important point fourthly a sidq and that's being truthful and the opposite of it is being is, is lying the shaykh says the al munafiqeen yaqulun la ilaha illallah lakinhum kadibuna fi qulubihim la ya'taqiduna ma'naha qala allah ta'ala idha ja'aka al munafiqoon qalu nashhadu innaka la rasulullah wallahu ya'lamu innaka la rasuluhu wallahu yashhadu inna al munafiqeen la kadibun ittakhadu aymanahum junna <coughs> so then the shaykh mentions about truth and the opposite of it is uh, uh, is uh, uh, lie, lying. So he says because the munafikin, the hypocrites, uh, they say they say la ilaha illallah, but they lie because it, it, they lie because in their hearts they don't believe in it. They don't believe in what they're saying. They're lying. Allah subhanahu wa taala said in Surah Al Munafikun. So if you go to Surah Al Munafikun, uh, just give me one second. Now go to Surah Al Munafikun. Verse, I don't find it. Verse, uh, first and second verse. When the hypocrites come to you, O Muhammad sallam, they say, "We bear witness that you are indeed the messenger of Allah. Allah knows that you are indeed His messenger, and Allah bears witness that the hypocrites are liars indeed. They have made their oaths a screen for their hypocrisy. Thus, they hinder men from the path of Allah. Verily, evil is what they used to do. Yeah." Right, so 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 that's that, and then uh, and then al mahabba fifth one al mahabba and that and takuna muhabban li hadi al kalima waliyin li ahliha amma ladi la yuhibha aw la yuhib ahliha fa inha la tanfau. So then you have to have that love in your heart for this statement la ilaha illallah. So you have to have that love. That statement has to be present, uh, as in that that in your heart you have to have that love for the statement. So that love has to be present in your heart, right? And that you, you know, the that you have love for the people who also say La ilaha illallah, and upon that, you know, like that. And then the Shaykh says, "Walinqiyad didu liirad wa tark." And alinqiyad is submitting and following. So it's uh, submitting your will as well, and and following then what you've been commanded to follow. And he says the opposite of that. He says didu liirad wa tark, and the opposite of it is turning away and leaving things and leaving off. So the Shaykh says, "Wa huwa al-inqiyad lamma tadullu alayhi min lima tadullu alayhi min ibadat la wahda wa la sharika la wa imtithal awamiri ma ma dumta tarafta wa shahadta annahu la ilaha illallah yulzimuk an tanqad li ahkamihi wa dinihi amma an taqul la ilaha illallah 
ولا تنقاد بأحكام الله وشرعه فإنها لا تنفعك لا إله إلا الله. So then the Sheikh says that you, uh, that you have this um, submission and following. So whatever Allah has commanded you with, that you follow it and, 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 and you uh, act this out. And so you just don't say, La ilaha illallah, you don't have all the other conditions, the previous conditions, and then, you know, you're not actually following what you've said you believe in. So you say, but then you're not acting out what it actually entails. So following the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here in submission, uh, 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 and this is what's meant. And then finally, wal qabul. And, and the Shaykh says, al qabul al munafi lil rad, bi an la tarud shay'an min huquq la ilaha illallah wa ma tadul alayhi bal tuqbil kull ma tadul alayhi la ilaha illallah tatakabbaluhu taqabbulan sahihan. And then it's acceptance, al qabul, acceptance. So full acceptance of what la ilaha illallah is what it means, what it entails, what it carries, what it requires of you to do. You have to be, your heart, you have to be, you have to have this in your heart, that you have to accept it, that you accept all of it, that it entails conditions, everything that's required from it, and that's the final condition. So then, uh, what we'll do is, we'll, uh, I'll just read this bit here. وَزِيدُوا ثَامِنُهَا الْكُفْرَى لِبِمَا مَا الْإِلَاهِ مِنَ الْأَشْيَاءِ قَدْ أَلِهَا أَوْ أُلِهَا so then uh, there's some poetry and the, the Sheikh says, i.e. meaning that he says, Al-bara'atu min al-shirk fala yakunu muwahidan hatta yitabarra min al-shirk. Wa id qala Ibrahim, Ibrahim li abihi wa qawmi inna ni bara'un min ma ta'budun. So finally, the last point here, and we finished, alhamdulillah. And the line of the poetry means uh, that basically you're freeing yourself from shirk. You are freeing yourself from shirk. So uh, so you, you can't be a muwahid a person upon Tawheed uh, up until you free yourself from shirk. As in the statement of, uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where he said about Ibrahim, uh, here which we read from Surah Al-Zukhruf, verse 26, when Ibrahim alayhi salam, he said to his father and the people, and his people, indeed I am free from that which you worship, i.e. the idols that they worship. So then the Sheikh said, Hadi shurut la ilaha illallah, thamaniyat uh, shurut. So that, uh, uh, eight, sorry, uh, uh, conditions, the Shaykh says, these are the conditions, sorry, eight conditions of La ilaha illallah. So, uh, that's the correction, I'm sorry, I want to make, I've read that wrong. So, so basically it's eight uh, conditions uh, of uh, La ilaha illallah, Barakallahu feekum, and uh, inshallah we'll uh, continue next week uh, with the second testification, which is... Uh, Ashadu an la, uh, uh, which is Ashadu anna Muhammadun Rasulullah, uh, which is a long lesson. So we'll stop here. I think it's a good time to stop, and we'll continue next week. Bil nai taala, barakallahu fikum. Subhanakallahu wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa tuwilaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.